Um, before we get going, is there any uh, planning board business other than the um, applications we have before us? Just some quick questions that anyone has that we could get out of the way so we don't have to wait through the entire meeting until the last session of public comment. That looks like big sport chairs. No, I'm wondering if you want to say If another member comes. Yeah. <coughs> Anybody? How, how many people in the beekeepers group? There was about like, yeah, there yeah. 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 Cool. And they had That's a lot good. of stuff. So yeah. Yeah. they were oh, really good. Good. Yeah. They, they, they look more interesting too than anyone. <laughs> okay. Your chair right there if you'd like. No, that's okay. We'll leave it for somebody else. All right, we're going to go over the minutes. Did anybody see anything? Are there any changes that you made from the last meeting? Yeah. I'm all set. I'm all set. All right, that's good. I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we have three applications before the board tonight. Um, first one up is Scott and Christine Bailey. Uh, if no, if anyone here is unfamiliar with how this works, basically the applicant will come up, they will make a, a presentation of what their applicant is, application is, an explanation. Um, then it will be open to a public session where the public can ask questions of the applicant or their agent if they have one here. Um, we just ask that you do it. We're all friends and neighbors here. Everyone, civil, polite, kind, treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, so, with that, uh, quickly, the first person up is Scott and Christine Bailey. I would ask the board, we do need to uh, release an opinion. Uh, because it was made between council and the board, uh, it is confidential, but I do think it should be released. It, be released. Um, it is the uh, opinion from our attorney, Mr. Murray. I think everybody had a chance. Okay. Savior, I'm sorry, Mr. Savior. Savior. It was last meeting. Okay. Uh, basically, this goes back to a, a problem we were having with notification uh, by certified letters. Um, and we think it's important because it's actually very good information uh, that this be released and that it goes into the packets. Uh, so, can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. <laughs> By the way, I apologize. This is my second time running a meeting, so if I have to look and cheat a little bit at my notes, excuse me. All right, so we have the uh, Scott and Christine Bailey. This is a site plan review in the neighborhood business zone. Uh, it is a tax map and location land. Do you have that? 1441. 1441. 1442. 1441. 405. Good morning, Thank you. Um, we have a site plan review for a uh, excavation and uh, engineering business. So with that, we did, Leanne and I did check, the application is complete. Um, can I have a motion from the board to accept jurisdiction over the application? So move. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. All right, would the applicant like to show what we got going on? That'd be me. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm Scott Bailey. I, uh, I run a, a septic design, shoreland permitting, engineering business, um, in which I have uh, a couple excavators that I do test pits with. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got two trailers and two little excavators and a, and a small 550 dump truck that I haul around with. And I'm just looking for, I don't have like, I don't have like people coming to my house. 
you know, so there'll be no increase in traffic or any issues like that. I, uh, you know, just want to essentially park my equipment on my uh, on my side yard, and uh, I mean, you all have a copy of the site plan. Yeah, yeah. You see the little the little red rectangle there. And I didn't bring my glasses. I don't know. I think I have them. Look at that. I feel like this, you know. It's like I don't feel that. Um, I essentially proposed. I, mean, I don't know why, but you know, with the with the setbacks, 50 feet from the road and 40 feet from my my sideline, I uh, propose an area of looks like uh, 60 feet by 80 feet, just to park my equipment. Um, like I say, it's it's no impact to the to the road. It's not like I have uh, customers coming in and out and, and doing that stuff. So just parking my stuff. How large is your lot? I think it's uh, almost 11 acres or 10 something. So this would just be a little a little spot. <coughs> Anybody have any questions or comments or? So we're gonna open it. Oh, let's go ahead. And so my issue is the state driveway increased use. That's all for. Would you technically need a change of use? Yeah, change of use for residents to business and residents. You gotta apply to the state, right? For the change yeah. of use of the driveway. Yeah. Apply to the state for. Yeah. Change of use. So right. use you, you, you have a, dri a residence driveway because it's a state highway. Mm -hmm. They control access onto the road. Okay. You have a driveway already, but it's a residential driveway, and because you're changing the use, they're going to want a new permit. You have to apply to the state for a a, a, a commercial permit for your driveway. Okay. Did the I mean did the fire department already submit anything like that because they use the driveway to access the. The fire yeah, pond? Yeah, the fire pond and no. stuff. No. So that means they're exempt? Or have they never done it? Well, they just don't have to do it. They don't. I mean, Spelly doesn't because it's not a continuous use, it's when needed. So they have a bunch of them all over the place. But the state requires when a residence changes from a residence to a business or both that they just get a change of use for a driveway. Okay. We just did it the, I don't know three, four months ago for a pet grooming thing down the end here at the end yeah. of 109A and they just require it. Okay. It's just kind of a formality for the state. Where do I get that form? From the state? From the state department. <coughs> okay. Just at three, they're in Guilford. Yep. You have plenty of scientists in this area. Yeah. Right. It won't. They'll, they'll come out, they send the crew out, a couple of guys, and check the site distances. That's it. Okay. <coughs> Not a problem. Or you need about 400 feet direction? Yeah. 400 feet sight distance. We should have that. We should have that. Right? Yeah. Does the board have any other questions for them before we no. open it up to the public? Um, the area that you have down here is your parking area. You've got red hatched or whatever on it. Mm -hmm. Are you going to put uh, gravel down to park the equipment on, or is it just, that just there to show us where you're going to be parking on. That's just there to show where okay, I'm so you're not I mean, It's all change. like sand. It doesn't even get muddy in the spring, which I was amazed at. Um, you know, so it, was, it would just be throwing money away to put gravel down. And the way it is now, I just mow it and it's fine. There's no ruts, there's no degradation or anything like that. But, but you do intend to keep all the equipment in that area as opposed to spread out all over the back. Right. You have signage? You're going to have signage, Jeff? Signage for my business? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> that will be subject to a separate sign permit if I remember right. Yeah, I submitted for a sign permit when I first moved into town. But it was going to be based off of this plan review. Can you see the equipment from the road? Yes, you can. 
leave it. Cover it or just leave it. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to you. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, if that's a requirement by the town, then I'll put up some stockade fence or shrubs. Shrubs. I think I read in the application you were you were willing to. I read a few applications tonight, but it looks <laughs> like you were willing to uh, be accommodating if there was an issue. Yeah, so. absolutely. We've already planted shrubs. We just have to wait for them to grow. Uh, anyone else on board before we open it up to the public? <coughs> All right. Does the public have any questions? Please state your name and address. Yes. Um, Good evening. My name is Mary. I wrote something. It's easier for me to read something. My name is Mary Louise Eaton, and I live at 409 Governor Wentworth Highway in Melbourne Village. My home is on the northerly side of Mr. and Mrs. Bailey's property. My property line is adjacent and closest and in view from the house area, and they have um, stored their equipment, supplies, tree trunks, stones, boats, uh, jet skis, etc., which is also adjacent to the main road, is in the site of the main road. The area under consideration is also adjacent to the fire pond and hydrant. Melbourne Village residents choose to live here for its charm, character, and peacefulness. The residents of Melbourne Village take great pride in keeping their properties well maintained and free of accumulation of things and equipment in view of the main road. I'm asking the planning board to request the Baileys to have a stockade fence installed to hide their equipment from view of the main road and also a stockade fence to shield the equipment from my property at 409 Governor Wentworth Highway. Um, I would also ask um, the planning board if they would be given a time frame and possibly to do this within six months. And thank you for your consideration. Anybody? Uh, Lad Eaton, 415 Governor Wentworth Highway. Uh, my property abuts uh, these folks on uh, two sides, the left end and the behind. And with so much acreage there, and there's tree trunks and stuff just all over the place. It just seems to me with all that acreage that they couldn't organize it a little bit better and clean it up so it's not so unsightly from the road. It seems as though we're going to be getting in a situation where we're going to be like another business that was here in town before. Steve Hunter, and I'm, I'm in a borough across the street, and um, I welcome uh, any any and all new businesses to come to town to help the livelihood of the town, and, and uh, I wish you well, and, and uh, just keep it neat for your neighbors. Oh. <coughs> Does anyone else have anything? All right, with that, we're going to close the public session. And uh, what do we think? Some screaming and buffering, buffering on the side. I think Street side, yeah. neighbor side, and restricted all to that area. Um, I think there should be some, I don't know, what's the set, what's the distance between the fire hydrant, the dry hydrant there, and we have been on parking. No scale here, so okay. yeah, that's ten feet. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I usually I don't even park over there anyway. It's mostly mostly in the back. I could probably shave that down to four. <coughs> <hours away. coughs> just they need some clearance. So I would talk to the fire department just to make sure they have enough room to pull their truck in to get to the right side of the truck for the hydrant. That's all. Now you have this is quite a large piece of property. I myself, I'll speak for the board, when this was moved to the rear. It sounds like you have pretty good soil. It's an LDR back there, though. Oh, jeez. What's that mean? The Low density residential, residential, not neighborhood business. So. Neighborhood it's business on which this lies in, what was 300 feet off the road, and you're allowed to move that 20 feet, so 20 feet. But, um, yeah, so that's, let's show that right. more across. Yeah, that's, that's your, your line right there. Um, but he could move this area back. So it's all well, what I was going to suggest, if you didn't want to, you know, the screening shrubs are expensive, stocking fence is expensive. You know, rather than do that, if you just put it in soil, you could put this towards the rear and hide it in the trees, and then you don't have to worry about any shrub or anything like that. But 
The problem is this zone changes from oh. neighborhood business to low density residential. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if you, put, if you put in low density residential, wouldn't he technically then be, if he didn't have a sign, a full <coughs> occupation? I mean, that's visible from the street that he's up to buffer it, so it's outside. But if it was way back here? The only problem with putting it way back there is now I've got a plow all the way back there just to get yeah. my equipment out. Okay. We've planted, I mean, there's a, there's a there's huge trees right here in the front yard. And there's probably a 30 foot area that is between the two trees that we've planted uh, bushes just last weekend that will come up into that area so that it should like hide everything. And now, are we only talking about the equipment that is used for my business? Yeah, I mean, I mean boats, I jet boat, skis, jet I mean, ski. you're allowed to park those on your property, they're your own. So, I mean, you can't deny someone from parking their own boat on their property, as well as or, a jet ski. Or, or, that, so. or yeah, right. that's, yeah. yeah. It's what's used for the business. Right. So I've got two trailers. Yeah, materials that would be used for the business, that type of thing. So if you have gravel or something, you got to stockpile, whatever. So it's not that all I have is firewood there now. Right. Yeah. And I had some, uh, I had some trees that I had taken down, but I've had them milled up, and you know, mm -hmm. they're on the side of my barn now, so nobody will see them. Well, they might see them if they go up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but all the wood that's back there is for our wood yeah, stock. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. I would make a condition of screen on two sides as well as the state driveway. Yeah, I think that's good. Are we going to require fencing? Yes, some type of screen on the fence tree. Something that's you can't see through it. So obviously you can plant bushes and all that, but we can't wait 10 years for bushes to get eight feet tall. That's all. Okay, so I need to put up a stockade fence in the interim till things grow up if it gets to the point if it gets to the point where you can't see the fence anymore and you shouldn't be able to see the equipment what's the setback for fences from the from the line lot line the line is no higher than six feet <coughs> okay so i can put a six foot fence right along the right the line, line. Along the line yeah. okay a natural forest doesn't count? <coughs> it does as long as you, it hides what's there. But what happens in the winter time when the leaves fall down? Correct. It's right. It doesn't hide what's there. Okay, so it has to be 365 days a week, a year. It has to be. The neighbors were asking for screenings. Oh, so, no, yeah. no, I was just questioning. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right. I was just curious, what exactly are you trying to hide? Equipment. Um, equipment. 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 Supplies. I have two. I have two excavators and a dump truck and trailers that go with them. So, I mean, if the fence is such a permanent thing, and it's, in my opinion, seems out of place in a country setting. But, but you don't have to look at you it. Don't have to look at it. No, no, I, no, I'm just making a comment. Mm -hmm. it's not Maybe you could have a designated spot to park those. <coughs> he, does. he does. He does. He does. He does. It is a designated. This is just for the. <coughs> so this is the existing house. We're talking about a screen is around a, the parking. The parking for right, the two sides. Yeah. We're talking about is there's some existing screening here already. Yeah. But adding a stockade fence around this corner right here, plus the screening that's there. And then just just the business wise, nothing that has to do with his own personal use, boats, trees, things like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. Yep. So this has a, um, I'm sorry, a dry hydrant on the pond right here. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you're gonna continue to allow the fire department to use that. Oh, absolutely. It's not landowners' leisure, so. 
We have no problem with that. I mean, the Chiefs been over and they yeah, just, you know, they're yeah. friendly guys, you know. Great guys. It's awesome. Does anybody have? Just that. Just the screen and the driveway permit from the state. I'll make a motion to accept it on those conditions. Let's just make sure we list out the screening as stockade so, fence, solid screening, solid screening, or 365 day a year coverage by shrubs, bushes. At some point, if they grow to the point where they can do that, um, and we want to give them a time frame, but it has to be done by. Um, how long is that? Well, the state permit is when you get it. So. Yeah, we can't. We still have yeah, control of that. What, what's a reasonable amount of time for you? Six months. I have no problem with that. So let's add a time frame to the condition. Uh, the state DOT change of use screening. Anything else? Is everybody okay with the time frame? Yeah. So we need a, you made the motion. Make a motion. We need a second. Second. And a vote. You got something to say? Oh, I have sorry. a quick question. Yep. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this side of the <coughs> property, yep. for the individual that doesn't want to, yep. how do we know how far that has to go? Well, <laughs> I think you're going to be fine. Let me, I'll show you this in a second. Um, by where the house is here, if the fence just ran with the length of this right here in this L, mm -hmm. the, you know, the vision really from the house isn't going to. So I would just, to me, the, the length of this parking lot looks like it would do it. Okay. So let me just show it. <coughs> <coughs> So this is from your house right over here. So what we're talking about is the fence would run mm -hmm. the length of this and over to here. And that way, just looking at the house, it looks like it would. Some hubs. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You guys good with that? Mm -hmm. Just need to know. Uh, so we can we have a vote. All in, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you don't know, be your first time. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the meeting's not over. Yet. <laughs> all right. Uh, the next thing on the uh, on the agenda is the Clark House Family Trust. Um, I do need. Before we get going, a motion from the board to release. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What'd you do? I'm also going to provide the board with they received approval, subdivision approval, which I'm sure Jim will so, have in his presentation. You guys can take a, a gander at this quickly. No, this is uh, basically about uh, a question was raised of whether this would require ZBA approval. Okay. And so we sent it to the uh, Planning Board Council to have their opinion on it. And this was his response. I'm just going to ask you guys to quit look at it and then we would like to release it. Um, now, are you going to be able to share that with us? I'm um, letting the board read it. And then we're going to vote to release it. Okay. Um, and once you release it, it's going to be part of the public record. But given that I want to speak, would you be able to at least summarize it or let me take a look at it? In one second when we vote on it. Because it's between the board and the attorney, it's, you know. Oh, you did? Yeah. That way all of them at the same time. Sorry, I was seeing
Can I have a motion to release uh, council's letter? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Yep. Actually, what I'll, I'll probably do is just read this. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, for your file. <coughs> the question was raised about whether this condominium subdivision needed a uh, ZBA approval in order to be approved. Um, so it was, it was a legal technical question, and we run into that, we send it to attorneys. So because it's cheaper than making a mistake. So uh, the question was raised, we sent it to the town council. I'm just going to read this quickly just for the record. So uh, the planning board inquired as to me as to whether the Clark House Family Trust must apply the Tuftenberg Board of Adjustment in order to convert the two existing dwellings on the property to the condominium form of ownership based on the application filed by White Mountain Survey and Engineering Inc. It is my understanding that no changes to the dwelling of the property are proposed other than the form of ownership. For the reasons set forth below, it is my considered opinion that the trust is not required to apply to the Board of Adjustment in order to convert the property. Uh, and then he quotes RSA 356-B5. Um, I'm not going to bother to read that. But, um, Roger Murray, Alex is in um, And this is available to anyone, anybody who may read it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I was. Um, absent when this came before the board last time. Um, so my question is, do we already accept jurisdiction on this? Or is this not in the paper? It is not. Uh, we did not. Okay. We schedule we didn't. Right. Yep. Uh, so the name on the application we already went through, and the street address and tax map number are 2-1-67, one Allen Road, Tuftonboro, New Hampshire. Uh, and with that, I believe Mr. Rines is here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, I'm Jim Rines from White Mountain Survey and Engineering. Mm -hmm. and I'm here representing the, the uh, Clark House Family Trust in their application for a subdivision uh, via the condominium conversion of the existing two uh, dwellings on the lot. Uh, as was mentioned, the property is located at 1 Allen Road. Uh, it is 1.73 acres in size. It is zoned medium density residential. There are two uh, two bedroom year round homes on the property. Uh, we are proposing to uh, create two units. Unit one, which would be this first unit to closest to <coughs> the highway, has an existing dug well up here and a, a pre. Uh, state approved septic system. Unit 2 has a, a drilled well here and a state approved septic system in this location. The proposal is uh, basically to create two uh, condominium units that are ground units. The unit boundaries are polygons on the ground. This would be unit 1, this would be unit 2, and uh, this would be uh, the identical form of uh, condominiumization that we did for museum lodges uh, a number of years ago. Uh, unit one is uh, 0 0.19 acres in size and is roughly 76 by 106 feet. Unit two is 20, uh, 0.2 acres uh, in size and approximately 95 by 92 feet. Uh, the access uh, will remain unchanged and will be off of uh, Allen Road, which is right along here. The uh, frontage remains unchanged, the lot area remains unchanged, the use remains unchanged. Uh, anyone driving by this will see no visible changes because there are no physical changes proposed. We uh, have filed, and uh, as you have just received tonight, uh, we have state subdivision approval for the condominium conversion. And uh, I have two letters of support uh, for, to submit for the uh, record here uh, this evening. And uh, we are essentially seeking uh, conditional approval this evening, conditioned on just setting the, the four uh, corners of each unit. And those essentially become the as-built so that the 
the structure that's on the unit uh, and if they put a deck or a, a screened in porch or something in the future they don't have to come back to the planning board for an as built as long as they stay inside the, the boundaries of the unit. And with that I would be happy to answer any questions that the board or the public might have. I have a quick question on the procedure. Should I read these for the public record? You should read them and, and then request acceptance of jurisdiction. All right. So we have two letters that are in support of the application. We're going to read them for the public record quickly and then we'll continue on. Uh, dated 10 to 18, Dear Tupper Road Planning Board, I have looked at the survey plans and talked and, and talked to Meredith about proposal on the property. I agree with the plans and I think that it should go forward. Thank you. And I apologize that I probably make out this name, but it looks like Diane maybe. Diane, I think Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Okay. Uh, another letter dated October 3rd, 2018, to whom it may concern. I, Mary G. Smith, as a neighbor of Meredith Stanley, would like to like it known that I am full support of Miss Stanley's condo minimizing minimizing of her property on Allen Road. Melbourne Village, New Hampshire. Sincerely, Mary G. Smith, 523 Governor Wentworth Highway, Melbourne Village, New Hampshire. Can I have a motion that we accept these? We will accept it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, can I have a motion? We have reviewed this and the checklist appears to be complete. Can I have a motion that we accept jurisdiction of the application? I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Ryan's before we open it up to the public? Is there anything in these houses that share in common right now? No. No, you nothing, no power, no anything. No, no, separate. Okay. separate. And they each have their own entrance on Allen Road? Yes, so they it's, do. It's not a shared driveway or anything like that? No, the, uh, the entrance for Unit uh, 2 is right here, and the entrance for Unit 1 is right here. And there's no change of uses on the property that I anticipated? No. finished his review, so there will be a condition of that as well. All right, we can open it up to the public. All right, with the public, anyone has any questions, uh, just state your name and address and Mr. Um, Ryan's right there. What's that? And Mr. Ryan's is right there. Yep. Uh, Bob McCorda, 1 Allen Lane, I'm on the bottom. Um, I have several two, three pages of concerns, objections. So should I just read those? Absolutely. And then this is a copy for the board. Uh, there's photos in that in that um, package and then that. These are just copies of the text if folks want to okay. follow yeah, along. Yeah, we'll pass those around. Yep. Just give me one second. Should be a copy for Jim if he wants one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, would you want me to read this, or has everybody got to go through it, and then? I mean, if you if it's what you would like to present to the board, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to go through this and then take questions or yep, get some absolutely. That's discussion back and forth. Yep. I have a procedural question, if I may. Sure. I don't understand, and, um, and I hope I know how to answer. Yeah, it. that's all right if you don't. I don't understand how, um, given that I've already indicated I might have some objections or concerns, um, how you take jurisdiction without hearing what those concerns are objections are. So I guess I would ask if, if I present 
I actually know the answer to that. Go ahead. Because one. Because when I went to the state website on the exact way to run a planning board meeting, it starts off on the top with accept jurisdiction and then do it. So yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna <coughs> now the state has been wrong before, but I'm gonna go with it, they probably got this one. So what happens if I raise issues that are of concern to you also, and it looks like maybe you don't have jurisdiction, you just revote? We would continue, we would more than likely refer it to council. Okay. And then we would continue the meeting until we had okay. information from council. Shall I begin? Absolutely. Okay, prior to 2004, One Island Lane had a single family residence as the only structure on the 1.7 acre lot. In 2004, a valid building permit was issued for accessory structure used as a single family residence. The accessory structure was permissible, but a subdivision of the 1.7 acre lot to two lots was not permissible. Although a building permit was issued by the town, there's no record of any inspections or site review by the planning board or code, code enforcement officer. Jack. I don't think Jack was, I don't think we had a full-time code officer at the time. No additional site work was done. Um, but in later years, the use of the second structure has been a beauty parlor. No additional site work was done when that change of use occurred. As a result of no inspections being done on the project, there was no site review to address stormwater and drainage issues that have adversely affected our property. Part of the construction of the accessory structure was excavation for underground electric, cable, and telephone lines from the street down through the right-of-way, across the Alpenmitter's driveway and yard to a transformer that provides power to the new structure. As a result, drainage has always been an issue from the driveway of the primary structure, the driveway of the new structure, and off the banking of the applicant's yard close to the street. In 2017, major work was done at the driveway of the primary residence. Excavation to the left side of the driveway was done and a large hole was filled with stone to receive runoff from the driveway area. That was an ongoing issue. Stone was placed in the driveway to improve drain with drainage at the driveway. The right of way in front of the driveway of the primary residence was leveled to install cobblestone around the stone placed in the driveway. As you went to the right of way off Route 109, there is a nice crown to the road pitched to each side. As the road passes in front of the driveway of the primary residence, the difference in grading is distinct. It is flat. Over the years, we have made several offers to allow drainage to flow to our lot, which is right across the street. The applicant. <clears throat> refused our office. As depicted on the applicant's blueprints, there are several poorly drained wetlands as well as other wetlands. There is also a PVC drain pipe at the Route 109 end of the property that drains into a swale that ends up draining onto our property. The, the blueprints also depict an aged septic system as a primary residence that may be the source of periodic suds running down the road. There is also a small stream that receives runoff from the applicant's property as well as the adjacent development. This runoff goes through a cement culvert draining onto our property. There are significant drainage issues affecting our property that are not depicted on the blueprints. We object to the project for the following reasons. We believe the request should be for a change of use from a home occupied business and single family residence to a subdivision, which is not permissible based on the 1.7 acre lot. The second structure was placed after zoning was in place and the applicant knew it was not possible to subdivide the property without a variance. This prop project requires a variance from the SD to the ZBA. The applicant references and relies on RSA 356B as a basis for this request. RSA 356B-5 
reads as follows and is very specific about the condominium projects, about con condominium projects not being treated different than any other project request because it is a condominium. The RSA is clear that the statute does not replace local zoning ordinance. And I won't go through it again. Matt has already read the referenced statute that council um, put out in the, in the other communication. But the fact of the matter is the 356B does not, does not, is not a substitute for local zoning ordinances. Um, and to rely upon the state statute as, as an approval piece of this project is, is not correct in my opinion. The application, I'm, I'm going to go down past the state ordinance because we've already heard from Matt on that. The application is for a non-conforming subdivision that requires a variance. The planning board does not have jurisdiction. This application should be moved to the ZBA to be considered for a variance. By virtue of the town's own definition of a subdivision, which by the way, the application is for a subdivision. In addition to what we believe to be the need for a variance due to the change of use and non-conforming use of the proposed project, we believe the ap application also requires a site review based on the town's own zoning requirements. In particular, we are interested to see a storm drainage plan as required by section 3.3.3F. Attached are pictures of drainage conditions typical in the summer or winter months. Note pictures of the drainage from the top of the applicant's property and driveway from the second structure washing off the road. Of particular concern is drainage that was installed in the applicant's primary structure driveway to a stone pit to the left of the driveway. The driveway is filled with stone for water to leach to, to the stone pit next to the driveway. The water that goes to that stone pit surfaces during the winter months, drains down the right of way to our driveway and freezes. This stone drainage pit is not depicted on the blueprints. So then I provided multiple photographs of um, both winter and summer conditions, um, which I'm glad to go over if you want to. But um, I'm, I, I'm not looking to be adversarial, but Jim's presentation doesn't tell the whole picture. Um, I don't think relying on a, uh, an approved condominium project from from another property is a reason to approve this pro project if the application is deficient. And if I'm not mistaken, some of these condo conversions that have been done in town have been done on a, on properties that have existed long before zoning, and they weren't condominium projects that were um, built after zoning. So I don't, I don't think the two are the same. This particular application is nothing but an end run around subdivision regulations. And I don't think it's fair for some of these issues not to be addressed as part of the application. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sure. I have a question. Guy Pike, Mill Road. Um, if, should this project go forward, are those two condominium units going to be taxed separately? Yes. So, okay. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody? Before I let one. I have a question sure. for Jim. I, I did review your plan, um, and I noticed that there were the lot loading calculations um, call out eight potential bedrooms on that property. So my, I guess my question to you or to the board would be, does this condominium, if it's approved, do, does that actually allow for doubling the size of these two houses vertically? 
before we let's just see if anybody anybody else. Uh, my name is Mel Jackson. I'm at 18 Lanes in. I'm in a butter. Uh, my concerns also were with the drainage uh, because I do want to go down that road. Uh, we have an access road into our back yard, and the drainage is, is terrible. It can be dangerous at times uh, as far as the landscaping is. And that was my concern for being here tonight with the drainage. Uh, Where, where's your house? We're at uh, Lane's End Condominiums. Oh, okay. Yep. So we're about the back end of their property. So you're not there. Okay. Do you drive down at Allen Lane or do you come in off of Lane's End Road? I can go either way. I can go down Allen Road or I can come down Lane's End Road. <coughs> we have an entrance to our back end of our property. I didn't know that. But... So you know the road? Yeah, I know the road, right. You're yeah, right, it's a nice top of the road, but when it goes down, it just flattens out and everything runs off. And it's, it's, it's not a good situation in the winter and the summer. Is it a private road or a town road? It's a private road. Private. Who maintains it? Uh, whoever coughs up money and hires someone, there's no maintenance agreement. Okay. Yes. And no association or anything like that? I've offered many times to direct that my major concerns over to our property because that section of our property is wetlands and I went down any other day. So it wasn't raining, but they could see some washouts. Mm -hmm. So not to put you on the spot, but do those photos depict what you may have Yeah, okay. pretty much, yeah. I mean like I say it wasn't raining at the time, but you could see where it had rained. And further down the right hand side of the road is gully bell, let's say. But I so my biggest this no fence, Jim, but these these prints, there's nothing showing coming my way as to what effect that property, that lot in its current state, and even you know, down the road, has on our lot. So I don't th I don't think it's a fair depiction and I think there's issues that are being ignored and I, I again I'm going to keep saying I think it's an end run around the zoning to subdivide a non-conforming lot or a lot that there isn't even enough frontage on 109 to make two lots out of it if it was two acres we could push it to require a variance so I I think there's a lot more work to be done to 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 get the drainage squared away or presentable so that it does not adversely affect our property and even property down the road. I mean, all that runoff is going down to, to your development too. So, And there's bigger issues too with the center cove stuff coming over. It isn't all just from this particular issue. So I'm not trying to portray it as that's causing all the problems, but the runoff from that property is certainly a factor. So I'm just asking if this gets looked at hard. Jim, do you want to? Sure. Um, so nobody else. So uh, the drainage issues are, are really separate and distinct from from this application because anything if if this let's say this were denied, that's not going to change any of the issues that have been raised here tonight. Um, in answer to the question about the condominiumization, uh, this was approved as two two-bedroom condominiums at the state level. We just simply showed that there was capacity for more, but what we asked for approval is what's here, two two-bedroom condominium units. Um, but the- Well, my, my the, question again would be, you, you, you show according to your soil data that you can actually get eight bedrooms on an acre of land which I'm sorry I developed a lot of land I find that unbelievable but yeah well it's it's just the same regulations the state approves yeah. your development zone so I, I know but I, I as far as my brother I'd request review yeah. by but an independent party so back to the and the question of, of the me. 
Are, are you answering my question? Or? I, I, I did it. You asked me how many bedrooms, if they could double the size of it, they, they can do whatever they can do for two bedroom. You know, you can have a 15,000 square foot two bedroom home. Uh, I, I understand so that. So these cannot be more than two bedroom homes by the state approved septic system. I mean the state approved subdivision. What would preclude them from going back to doubling the number of bedrooms per unit. They'd have to go get state subdivision approval again. But they wouldn't have to get subdivision approval if they already have it. Read the subdivision approval. But by accepting your soil data, it's four bedrooms per unit. Not with condominiums. So uh, let me just continue on. As I, I mean, I think I've, I've answered it, but as far as this being a quote-unquote end run, this is low density residential, I mean medium density residentials, one acre, you're allowed on existing lots of record, two dwellings, the condominium statute as Roger Murray has said you can't discriminate simply because of the form of ownership and if it's allowed in any other form of ownership which your regulations allow two dwellings then you must allow it under the condominium form of ownership. Um, so as far as museum lodges not being equal, it's, it's exactly equal. In that case it was a far worse density. In that case it was 2.3 acres with 11 units on it. But it was and the state it was granted subdivision. It was non conforming It had been like that for years probably. Right? But your, your, your concern is that you're not meeting the density. You're not meeting one acre my per unit. Is drainage, so. I, I know, but, but you raised a question about density, so I'm speaking to that. Yeah. So the, the question that was raised about density is that museum lodges can't be equated to it because it was, <coughs> was pre-existing. That's, that's not true because if you're condominiumizing it, then you, in theory, have to meet whatever regulations exist just like we're doing. And because it existed in another form of ownership, you didn't have to go to the zoning board there. The state granted the subdivision approval. The town granted the condominium conversion. And it was land units like this. So, as I said, the drainage issue is, sounds like it's an issue, but it has nothing to do with this application before you. And it's something that's going to exist whether you approve or deny this. Um, may, I, may I? So, T today, the way I the way I look at things, and you have more experience than I do, granted. But the way I look at, if I came in to see Jack and said, "I have a 1.7 acre parcel of land, I want to put two buildings up, or put a second building up," he'd say, "Yep, fine, fine." And I get the permit, just like what has happened. As soon as I said to Jack or whoever the authority is, "I want to subdivide this property," and have two single-family residences on it, which is exactly what's going on. The form of, form of ownership is, is somewhat irrelevant. That's what's going on. It's being subdivided into two distinct parcels with just a, a different form of ownership. The 356 states that it, 356 is not a substitute for local zoning. And our local zoning does not allow building a single family residence on a substandard lot. So in this case... Well actually it does. Go ahead. An existing lot of record that's substandard, you're allowed to build on it. So this one is... But... What? But but not a sub... You can't subdivide it into no, two... No, you can't right? subdivide it, but that's existing non-conforming lot of record you can build on. That's yeah. my point is that right. this application is very clear. Even in the application, it says we want to subdivide the property. And you've argued that the form of ownership is, I don't know, irrelevant or the state allows it or whatever. But the local zoning does not allow us to take a substandard sized lot and put a single family residence on it. And in effect, when I say Enron, that's what's going on here. Not to mention the fact that there's other issues that were permissible along the way, but there's been, there was no mention in the application or in your presentation that we've got a commercial operation, home occupied, granted, but there's a there's a beauty salon on the property. Never mentioned. 
So this has gone from primary to accessory structure with a home occupied business to one, one single family residence to a home occupied commercial business. So I'm just curious how none of that was mentioned. Um, and, I, and I don't understand, Jim, and I'm just I'm trying to understand how you can say that the draining issues, the drainage issues don't matter. I don't, I don't get that. Because if, if, if this, by what I've read in the zoning regulations, because, because it's non-conforming for two single family residents, right? It, it, the zoning regulations push this to a variance from the ZBA and back to planning board for site review. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't understand how this can, can blow by without one, if not both of those. Not a lawyer. So, so uh, section 3.7.4 of your zoning ordinance <coughs> says that any lot that can support a duplex residence without a zoning variance and without a waiver of the state of New Hampshire Water Supply and Pollution Control Division will be allowed up to two dwellings. The dwelling units shall be subordinate in scope and scale up to the main dwelling unit. The second dwelling may stand alone and be incorporated into an auxiliary structure such as a garage or barn. So this is conforming. You Has have it a 7, you have a 1.73 acre lot. It can support a duplex, so therefore having two dwellings on it is conforming. And the statutes are clear, the, the <coughs> Supreme Court case law is clear that if it can exist under some other form of ownership, then it can be condominiumized. This is simply a conversion of what exists. And I'm not saying that the drainage doesn't matter. I'm saying it's not material to the application of subdivision. And that's why I say whether this is approved or denied, it's not going to change that maybe Allen Road needs to have a, an association created and you know, pools of money to fix the drainage. But that's got nothing to do with the application before you. I disagree. There are no, the there are no physical. I've got the floor, please. There are no physical changes made to this. This is lines on paper and a form of ownership. It is. It has nothing to do with the drainage. The drainage is a problem. I. I I'm hearing that. I understand it. But it's not. It's not a part of this application. If this were a site plan <coughs> review, then the planning board has the opportunity to look at landscaping, screening, drainage, things like that. But this is this is a, an application for a two unit subdivision. And the reason we applied under subdivision is by both the state and town definitions, condominium conversion is a subdivision. And it is something that is used in cases like this, where if somebody's against it, they feel like it's an end run, but it is a vehicle and it's it's not as desirable there are many you know there aren't as many buyers <coughs> to buy a condominium unit when they know that they're they've got condominium association things to deal with they have some common land issues whereas most people prefer to paddle their own canoe and have their own separate lot of record so this isn't uh, like that Oh, well, he's asking me questions. <laughs> it, I don't know the answer to this, but is a subdivision considered a commercial or, re I mean, a um, condominium conversion considered a residential use or a commercial use? We're not changing so, the use. It's not changed. It's still residential because it's one or two family. So, it's not a commercial. The question, the really question here, what, what, what I'm hearing is that how do we how do we require the owners to correct the drainage when we, and if and when, we should approve this kind of main subdivision? I think there's two questions here. One is, is the condominium um, subdivision you know, legal and permittable in this case, which is a technical question, and 
it was referred to council. Council reviewed it, and he gave a very clear response, which from Mr. Murray is fairly unusual and right to the point. So, um, in, in my opinion, you know, the, the technical question of whether it is allowed or not um, has been reviewed by town council. He is our best opinion of, of whether it's legal or not, and his answer is that it is. And then, yeah, yeah, we didn't close the public session. So. Um, I understand your position about what you're speaking to, but Attorney Murray does not have the benefit of my uh, concerns and objections. Um, so I don't, I don't think he gave a, an, he gave an opinion based on what he, he knew, but the whole idea of this is for people to be able to come forward, and I don't. I don't think this is black and white. And I think approval of this as is, as it's going, opens up the floodgates for a line of people at the door to take substandard lots and subdivide them into condominiums, which I don't know that that's the intent of the zoning. So Since I've been here, there's been four. Yeah, and a lot of them and all of them wouldn't have fit on the lot. So. Right, but all of them were existing, right? Mm, before zoning? No. Okay. But anyway, I think I'm just stating yeah. that. I think there's enough there's enough about our own with our own zoning, we, we can't say that the state approved it, the state statute allows it. It does, but it also pushes you back to the the local zoning folks, the, the, the local zoning regulations. It doesn't, it doesn't wipe out the local zoning. And to Jim's, Jim's point about today, this, as it exists today, it's entirely permissible. It's very permissible and legal and all that kind of neat stuff. But unless you're gonna throw the local zoning regulations out the window, once it gets to the subdivision the subdivision category is requirements. There's site review, it, it could need a variance, um, but at a minimum it needs site review that has a whole host of things that would take care of the drainage concerns. I don't understand how the town can move forward knowing that they're approving a project that's going to continue to have an adverse effect on surrounding properties. I think it's wonderful there's support for this project. There's also objections, and I think those need to be looked at. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to the, to the drainage issue, but drainage, the, the, the opinion that Roger has issued, I think I, I sent an email to you giving you the Supreme Court decision. Um, that was was given to the town when Museum Lodges was approved, and what that supreme and there's there's been <coughs> subsequent cases since, and what those <coughs> have all done universally is, if a town has said no, you can't do this for the concerns that are being raised, the Supreme Court has every time overturned the town. They've said, no, you, if it exists and it's legal to exist in another form of ownership, then you have to approve this. You can't deny it because it doesn't meet it. And that's what, essentially, Roger hasn't cited any case law other than he's cited the statute. But there is, there is plenty of case law and it's, it's you know, the, the drainage issue, it, whether there was a drainage concern wouldn't change in my opinion, Roger's letter of whether it's technically permissible to approve this. It doesn't change the legality of that, that it's, a, it's another issue. And as I said, site plan review, which is, a, is something different, that's when you have the opportunity to deal with drainage and other things. And it sounds like, you know, there needs to be some drainage addressed, but it's not related to this application. 
One more time. So, again, the question is, could someone come in today, identical circumstances, um, and get not condominium, not, not a condominium approval, but approval to take a 1.7 acre parcel, put two residential units on it, one subservient to, to the other, and, and subdivide. Could they do that? For the variance. No, no, I'm just saying. Could it not be done? Not through this board if they're both subdivided. The, not a strict the, subdivision. They would have to get a variance, number one, and then that would push it, potentially push it to site review. And that's what I'm, I'm not saying this can't be done, but it needs to go through the proper process, well established by the town's own zone. Re regardless of what the state says, the state, if you read 356, the state pushes you right back to local zoning ordinances. It is very specific that 356 is not a substitute for local <coughs> zoning. And your, the town's local zoning indicates to me that this needs a variance and it needs, which potentially kicks it into uh, site review or some other criteria. So it doesn't need site review because it's not a commercial property. So it's not a commercial use. It's just it would be a variance for an undersized lot, but on a straight subdivision. But like you say, in the condominium rules, it states if it's allowed this way, it's allowed to be a condo. So I'm not. Uh, I'm. Just, I don't understand the uh, the lack of. If we didn't allow, if we didn't allow two dwellings on a piece of property as it sits right here, yep. then the condo wouldn't be allowed. Right, I get that. I understand that that's the condo could be allowed. The, that's why the state says that if it's allowed locally as it sits, it can be condoized. But if it wasn't allowed this way, it could not be a condo. But I also don't understand this. Now now you've thrown another wrench into things around, oh, this isn't commercial, it's residential. So it doesn't need site review? Right. I don't, I guess it's, I can. Why is a condo commercial? I don't, I didn't. The condo is not commercial. So all subdivisions are, are? Residential, correct. Residential. Correct. And Not all, I wouldn't say all no. subdivisions, but. So it's subdivision all when it's a house and no it's, uh, it's uh, a, other it's subdivisions residential. wouldn't require a site review or any any road stuff and no stuff. that's that's due to subdivision regulations are subdivision regulations that require road drainage and the whole nine yards that's for a traditional subdivision when you're breaking up land i mean like you see they're breaking up land but it's on paper it's not they're not putting any roads and they're not doing any dirt work so it doesn't require drainage studies and all that the way it sits here. If this was just, just let's just say this was 2.01 acres and they split it down the middle. That's a totally different story now. Now they're cutting the land in half, not making a condo because they want two lots. Then we can do drainage and stuff like that. I, I think what Bob's objection is, is that the restrictions are less this way. Mm -hmm. They are. And it is a loophole. It, it's there's no question about that. You know that the restrictions are less this way, um, and, and how this is being done. Um, but it's allowed. Yeah, it's 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 the the, it's sta the state RSA is not saying thing. you don't have to go to local zoning. Right. It's stating you have to go to local zoning because we allow this as it sits. So then, if therefore the condo can go through. So wouldn't that be a change of use? It is a change of use. It's a change of ownership. Change it's of a ownership. change of use. It's residential before. It's residential after. Right. It's still. If he if he said, hey, I want to take this piece of property right here, and I want to uh, take that front building and turn it into a dog grooming parlor, and I wasn't going to live there, change of use. But that's what we have going on. That's what's happened actually. But. It, you're allowed to have a home occupation. And, right. Okay. right. I mean, mo most of the people in Tuftonboro yeah. are home occupations. I still think it's a technical change in use. 
condominium to residential. Resident the condos are residential. They are. They are. But it's still a chain of condominiums to change the use. By definition, if it didn't have a different definition, yes. it wouldn't be a change of use. It's, it's a, actually a change of ownership. It's not really a use. It's still a residential use. It's still a home. Anyhow, is there a way we can fix this problem? Yeah, that's a pretty well, fair question. Huh. I, I agree with the ADU statute. I think it's great. Right. This is a clear abuse of it. Well, this, yeah. I mean, well, it, an ADU is different. Well, it isn't, it isn't. But. I mean, the, the first question is, is the condominium allowed? And I think right. the, the clear answer to that is yes. Yeah. The second question is, is in this form of a subdivision, condominium subdivision, you know, is any improvement to drainage required? You know, I, and I believe me, I do not doubt that there's a drainage problem. Can, can I back up before I forget? Okay. This, if again, Jack, if someone came in looking for permit to take this 1.7 acre lot mm -hmm. and subdivide it to end up with two residential structures on it, mm -hmm. could it could it be done with a variance? Yes. So that's where I'm at. But that's not a condo. No, but. But that would just. But that, there's two different. It's just the way. That would just lead you to oh, it can be I done by that. zoning, so it can be a condo. That's all. I know My that. point is that the 356 RSA 356 is specific. If it's otherwise allowed, correct. Then it can be converted to a condo. Correct. And and it would you would not be able to get approval to subdivide that 1.7 acre lot. Into two, two lots. To two lots, not being a condo. No, you could not. You but could, a condo, you can. But no, wait a minute. Now the statute says that if you, if you, if you, if you can't, if you can do it under the zoning, correct. You're good. Correct. But you can't. You can't divide that one seven acre lot into two lots and two. No, two. Just the way it reads is if if it's allowed as it sits, you convert it to a condo. It's allowed as it sits. Okay, allowed. this is allowed. Two dwellings on one piece of property. But you're blowing the zoning. You're blowing our own zoning right out of the water. Because because under our own zoning, mm -hmm. you could not do that. You, you couldn't subdivide the land and put two residents on it. That's Correct. My, that's my Correct. Point. Through a regular subdivision. Not right. a condominium subdivision. There's yeah. no such thing as a condominium subdivision in the zoning. It does not exist. It, we, we don't have no the we definition don't have of subdivision is includes condominium right. right and if you call it a subdivision it kicks you into a whole set of things that need to be well done. it's no different than bounding line adjustment in the eyes of the state that's a subdivision as well yeah. but, but, but my point my point is we're relying on 356 to be able to do this yet 356 pushes us back to local zoning i come in the door jack i want to do this and i want to divide that one seven acre lot and the only way you can do it is make it a condo. But you no, because now you're treating the condo condo different than zoning. Yeah. You can't if you can't do this under the local zoning, as is. This is allowed under local zoning as is. Right. Right but, here, two dwellings and a piece of property, and you can support separate yep. and water. And you totally allowed. And that's fine. Whether it's a half an acre or right. not necessarily a quarter of an acre, but a half an acre or whatever you can. But now if you but now if you, if you want to subdivide it, you don't have enough land. Right. But you can make it a condo. So what? Yeah. And and I think I heard that in in clarification of the RSA, the Supreme Court has upheld condoization in every case that was brought forward. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's a good way to rely on making a decision that's contrary to our own zoning. It's, it's an appropriate way to rely on making a decision when case law modifies the, the written statute. The fact of the matter is, you know, the Planning Board's Council, and again, this is a technical matter, you know, it gave us a very clear opinion on whether this was permitted or not. You know, no one at this table you know, has the knowledge that the town council has or planning board council has when it comes to whether this is permitted or not. 
And I mean, we could all be armchair attorneys about that. If, if, you, and if it's all over, and if everyone believes that you know, we were in error, then this decision can always be appealed, and that's why we have an appeal process. So with that, I'll just, I'll, I don't want to belabor it, but I'll sure. add one thing I, I've been searching through for the, for the case. So the one that was cited before was in 1991, and it was Cohen v. the town of Henniker. What the court specifically said is statute requiring that condominiums receive the same treatment and zoning matters as physically identical projects or developments under a different form of ownership. So that's the, that's the issue. This can exist today as it does. And all they're doing is condominium conversion. So, so it's if, if you don't like what your zoning ordinance permits, which it permits this, then you need to change the zoning ordinance. But denial of this application is setting the town up for a lawsuit. The only way you can change this in our zoning is to not allow two dwellings on a non-controlling lot. Or, or you could, if you went for a, a second dwelling on a pre-existing lot, Correct. you could make it subject to no further subdivision. Because I, I mean, I like, I like the, the ADU statute. Right. I, I think it's great. But that I would be the only way to get around this would be to not allow two dwellings on an underside, not only lot. I think we've talked our, our way through this one, but can we have, a, before we close the public session, can we have last remarks on this or? Yeah, I, I think I think it, I've already stated. I think it needs to go to ZBA for variance. Um, I think this this things that were not presented, like the existing home occupied business. Um, I think it, I'm requesting you you kick it to ZBA for variance, and then I'm requesting that it go for site review. Jim. Uh, so. Home occupations are permitted use. They don't require any site review, but where you can't site plan review, it's illegal to require site plan review of anything that is uh, a single family or a duplex. Uh, and residential, is it's not permissible to require site plan review. It's only for commercial and multifamily over, over a duplex. So, you know, if the home occupation was approved at one time, they had to come before us to do that, right? You know, it's a permitted no, use. Permitted use. Yes. <laughs> nothing exposed, nothing outside, visible outside, only that. It's a lot of, okay. a lot of sign under a home occupation. The whole town would have to come here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, so, like, so I'm, I just point out that everything here <clears throat> is permitted. This is simply, it, whether you want to call it a loophole, a way around conventional subdivision. It is a subdivision. It's a subdivision that's allowed by both your regulations and the state regulations. And all they're asking is to convert the existing situation to the condominium form of ownership where they can be conveyed individually. So I would just ask the planning board if, given what Jim just said, it is a subdivision, are you certain that this doesn't need further review or variances or whatever? Because Nobody's arguing that this isn't a subdivision. And we have zoning regulations for subdivisions. And I don't see that any of that's being applied. Is there anybody else? All right, with that, we're going to close the public session. And the board's going to thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Jack, what do you think? I don't know if we can put conditions on subdivision. I'm not sure. Oh, you mean a drainage and anywhere else? I'm just curious if we can put conditions on subdivision. Why don't we? I mean, the condition exists. There's plenty of water there, is it? And I, I have no doubt. So there's. I drove down there, but it wasn't raining when I was down there. It had rained previously, and I could tell where the water had traveled. All. Oh, I mean, all of Melbourne Village is. Terrible soil. Mm -hmm. It's basically a swamp, and 
You know, it's, uh, I, I've had occasion in all four seasons to go all the way down that road, and it's it's a problem. It's, it's you know, it is. Um, and uh, uh, I appreciate, I'm sensitive to the one off issue, particularly as it um, uh, affects the quarters. Uh, and um, certainly in moving forward, if there's a way for them to have that situation improved, then that would, that would be a good thing for everybody. Uh, That's what I think too. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, whether it's something that can uh, be imposed as a condition, whether we can impose a condition yeah, or not, I don't know. but. So uh, I we can, but I'm not sure what a subdivision is. Uh, I mean, they follow the rules of the subdivision, so. It, it, it will, it, if, if the drain, my, my sense is that if the drainage and the runoff across the road and, and icing in the winter and that sort of thing as a result of the water flow wasn't an issue, that the concern on the, on the part of Bob would be considerably less, maybe not at all. Um, You're correct. You know, that's You're that's correct. that's what's driving the issue, and and the the his thought about it having to get a variance and go through that process would then create some hope for a better better road condition going forward. Uh, it seems to me that. That the conduization isn't going to make it worse, but it's not going to make it any better. Uh, and if there, you know, ideal situation would be for the for the property owner to take it upon themselves <coughs> to fix the problem or to to help uh, mitigate the problem. Uh, whether there's any opportunity for this board uh, or anybody else to to impose that on them. Uh, because if it, if it were addressed in a way to improve it, then going forward there would be a better situation. You don't know if we could impose requirements. I don't know. Would you be willing to send it to the council for your opinion and continue this? That would be my guess. That's what I would do, just to ask the question. So whether we can put a condition on that subdivision. So. I don't believe it's required. I, I don't think it is either. No, there's no question in my mind that it's not required. Right. Um, but what's required and what the rules are and, and what is, is right is, you know, kind of two different things. I mean, if this was in me and my neighbor, I would, you know, yeah. I would meet with them and, and do what I could as far as the range. Um, but I feel that they are technically correct. I mean, it's, it's permittable. It's no going to be no different the day after <coughs> than it is, you know, whether it's, a, it's, as he stated, whether it's not, you know, approved or whatnot. Um, than it is, you know, if they hadn't done this, it would be no different. Um, it's not making anything better or worse. It's simply changing the ownership of it. I, so, you know, and I, and I feel for an applicant, you know, to have somebody engineer a drainage and to install a drainage and to do the drainage, it's, you know, it's a lot of money to do that. Um, so, I don't personally, you know, feel the need to ask that question, but if the board feels that way, then I'll be just... I'm only one. So. Hmm? I say I'm only one. Well, I suggested it as well. To me, the council for his opinion whether we could require these conditions to be corrected. For right, an existing condition to be corrected. Okay. Mm -hmm. On a condominium subdivision. Correct. Right. 
I'll make a motion to that if we want to do that. Do board. Let's, let's make a I would ask the question and see if we can get it, the answer by the next meeting. 19th. 18th. 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 Well, let's, let's talk our way through everything just right, so yeah. we're, you know, everybody's got dressed up here tonight. And, you know, let's make sure we got everything on the table. Does the board have any other concerns with it? Or? Everything else is existing, so water, the septic. There's no changes to the property, no changes to use, no, no. there's nothing. The condo documents in my review, we haven't got the answer back on them yet, so that's going to have to be a condition, so, yep. so it won't be approved tonight anyway. There's no easements over the property or anything like that. Yeah. All right, well, why don't uh, I make a motion that we refer to town council, uh, actually, I'm sorry, you already made that. Is that motion. a privately owned transformer? Or is it the co-op transformer? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, the co I don't know the answer either. I don't know the co-op. Well, well, not the co-op has any either. Down there, down there, so. Um, so I think Tony already made a motion. Um, it was exciting. So the question to the town council whether we can require these conditions to be corrected for their before approval. And that, of course, we're, we're going to have to continue the meeting until. Right, because we still need the decision on the condo documents. Was that seconded? Not yet. I don't seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so just so everyone understands, what we're going to do is we're going to refer the question of whether on a condominium subdivision you can, um, uh, the board can impose uh, any kind of drainage to be installed. That's not to say we will say the drainage will be installed, but the question is whether or not it can be installed. Of course, I would also say that if neighbors happen to talk to each other and work something out on drainage ahead of time, I think the board next time would be okay with Everybody was happy. I'm more than willing, but it's been a no for 10 years. Jim, I'm not sure if the owners are here, but can you convey that to them? I, I certainly do. Okay. All good? Thank you. All right. I, I don't know if we ever closed the public session. I don't remember. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I don't think you've made a formal motion to continue with that's been voted on. Have you? Right. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <coughs> did. Did you actually vote for the Yes, we did. Just to be sure, one more time, we're going to make a motion, we're going to be technically correct here, that we are putting forth the uh, question of whether on condominium subdivision you can impose uh, conditions. conditions and uh, that we are going to continue the meeting until we have the <coughs> review of the condominium agreement and his response about that. We have to continue it to a date certain. October 18th. October 18th. Okay. All right. Uh, Tony made the motion. I second. Morning. seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Yeah, do you have a piece? Uh, maybe. I could just stand up against the window. Uh, I was prepared for the time. Couldn't, couldn't get uh, Jim to leave his easel. Well, I didn't dare. And I I'm sorry. I'll get it over there. Everybody far enough out of the corner so they can see it. All right, so next on the agenda is Robert and Jennifer Brennan, tax map. 46-2-9, is that correct? The address, oh. There's, there's no know. house on it. Yeah, I'm not sure we even have an address. There's doesn't have a physical address yet. Okay. Um, one thing I need to make everyone aware of on this application, and I'm gonna ask for some indulgence on this, is I am technically an abutter to this. Actually, I'm not technically, I am an abutter to this. 
uh, I own the property across the street. Um, because we are running out of chairman and vice chairman at this time, <laughs> uh, I don't personally feel conflicted about this at all. Um, I, when I was not a butter, I sat on the board for some of the previous subdivision on this lot, which was 21 acres. Um, in the interest of having the uh, meeting move along, does anyone have issue if I do not recuse myself from this? I will absolutely recuse myself if anybody wants me to or any member of the board does. I think you're fine then. Okay. Um, and of course, are you okay with that? Uh, I'll reserve judgment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. My name is Ted Wright, for those of you who don't know me. I work for No Way Plains Associates. Hold on one second, Ted. Okay. Uh, we we have checked over the application. It is complete. And uh, we would have kind of a motion to accept jurisdiction. I make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. My name is Ted Wright. I work for No Way Plains, and we're representing the Brennans in this case. Um, this subdivision has been done several times in, in different forms and I think the last one, how many lots was the last one? 21. 21 lots. Okay, we're down to four. <laughs> Three lots on Mountain Road and the remaining 93 acres on with access on Durban Road. Um, it's pretty straightforward. They're all way above um, the requirements for standard lots. They all have plenty of frontage. The only issue that I have at this point is we would have to, the driveway permits were issued for a different use for the 21 lots. So we decided to hold off on getting the new permits until we have some idea that this is going to go through. But there's a on Durgan Road, there was never a permit issued for the driveway, but we did get wetland crossings that uh, will expire in February. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. What are the sizes of the lots? Um, well, the remaining piece is 93.38. That's lot one. Lot two is 23.88. Lot three is 11.17. And lot four is 1759. So these are all over five acres, so none well, of them right. are going yeah, to yeah. But they've been test pitted and soil data and drainage analysis and to death. Wetlands, everything. They're all going to have their own separate driveway? No, that's not correct. Uh, actually, we're going to combine lot two with two existing lots next door. And lot three and four will have a combined driveway. And then the remaining piece will come off of Durgan Road. The reason for that is the state only allows so many driveway access permits. So I'm just curious, on the original driveway that did the original two lots by the cemetery, did you have to reapply for that driveway? We are going Because to. it was never built. Yeah. The agent was never done. And we're changing it. We're changing okay. the use. Okay. So the, the lot, this one here? Sorry, I don't have it. Okay. This one here? Yes. Uh, Jan Sanders, uh, a butter, uh, Seven Lady Slipper Lane. This is our area here. Okay. And it's just kind of in the corner. Yep. Now, the use of this, uh, as, as far as the level of the land and, and that sort of thing, if, if a house were were to be built on this, um, you said the driveway is going to come. The shared driveway here. The shared driveway right. here. Okay. Um, would this? Would you have any idea where any building would happen on the seventh? The, that's entirely up to the, the person that purchases the property. They, they would have to stay stay outside the setbacks, mm -hmm. um, and they'd have to find a suitable building lot. So outside, uh, so. Right. Uh, let me show you that this one on this side is the topography. Right, okay. So that you can see all the two foot contours. Yeah. So what does that mean? 
every line is two foot of elevation change right. that you see on there. Mm -hmm. A lot of twos there. A lot of twos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think chances are, given the elevation there, they're gonna somebody's more than likely gonna go uphill. Probably yeah, gonna have to have the feet back. Probably. Yeah. You'll never know. Uh, and there is a piece of wetland that crosses that, a drainage. Yeah, so there. So they'd have to stay away from that without a permit. And just for some background, I'm, I'm not sure how much you know about. No, I don't know. Okay, I so just moved in. yep. So this parcel currently has an approval for a 21 uh, home subdivision. Conditional. It's, it's, it's already yeah. approved. Yeah, conditional. Right. Approved. I saw the yeah. sign. Yep. Yeah. Right. And no, it's. No it, there. I mean, it's a mass of roads, giant yeah. drainage system, I mean, just massive. So this this represents a much, much better improvement. A much better improvement by less. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. This is much less than what it has conditional approval for. Did you buy from the Evanses? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can I see the other side? Oh, sure. So would the individual lots be able to be subdivided again in the future, like the Union Wharf Road lot was here a couple months ago? As long as they have the front? Sure, as long as they meet all the criteria yeah. for a subdivision. Isn't there a house here? It's further down. No, yeah, it's the next lot over. It's, that's the house right there. So this is this is oh, okay. To your back on okay. So this is actually on one seventy one. That's correct. That's right. And then is so. say Cape Canyon Road is further down. Yeah, yeah this doesn't show any silver lighting as well. These other two. Okay. So those the corner of Canyon and Lady Slipper, I can't see. This is off the map. Do you have any questions? I have a question. I'm Mark Howard, and I'm also an abutter across the street. Where is the driveway permit for, I guess, there, there is a current cut for where the logging trucks went in and out. Is that the driveway? Up by the cemetery. Uh, yes. Just across from you, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's down below. Yeah. He's the one down below. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, it's across from Howard. Yeah, you're. I saw your sign. We walked it. Okay. And that same cutaway is right across from here. Right. Yeah. It's not. I'm just curious. Is that going to be the driveway? Is that the driveway permit that was approved? Oh, uh, no, I think under that wash, it's below the wash. You, you might want to come take a closer look. See the bigger plan. Well, the so the larger piece uh, is only going to have access off of dirting? That's correct. Are there any easements on the property? There's a currently, uh, well, there's two. There's a, uh, a, a public ser service easement here, and there's an easement here that's uh, proposed to be abandoned. The power line? N no, the power line's out here. This is a proposed easement. This is a that's something to do with the other subdivision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, okay. I think wasn't it a drain, drainage easement they had to put in there or something for the state? That it's an electric co op easement. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's all I know to be abandoned. So the power line is. Out here. That's the one that crosses Canyon. Right. 
just before, just after Lady Slipper. Right. Yeah. So it goes, it goes the line. other side of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Up behind fine. you, up Cannon yeah. Road, and yeah, it angles across. Looking at the map, it makes it look like it's. Yeah, it's just because Cannon Road is this way and Lady Slipper is on It is the back end of the. But it comes, it come, they converge. Right. And of course, there will be easements for the driveways. <coughs> No, it, it, it was. It's, it's the whole, it would be the whole uh, back line. It wouldn't be just this little area there. Have anything that would show okay. where your lot is, you mean where Canyon is, and that? Mm -hmm. No, you want to see it? I can show you a tax map. Because we, because yeah, cool. we, we found two markers in the back. Okay. Okay. Um, and we found the. Okay. Yep. The, the third marker uh, between us and. Um, Go, going towards Mountain Road or? Ye going towards okay. Canaan. <coughs> going towards Canaan. Okay. Because uh, Lady Slipper is a. Oh, uh, on your property line. Right. Okay, right. that wouldn't be on here. We're, we're only showing your back line. Right, right, right. Were, were the previous subdivision, were the monuments set? Yes. So they all have to. Good. Well, they weren't set by us. <laughs> Eric, so I don't think they were set. I well, set well face, most, right? I think the majority. outside was set, but the interior. They only he set them. a bunch of them on the interior. Mm -hmm. well, so, should, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the the two markers on the back line of our property, mm -hmm. um, they're just pipes in the ground. And have they been visited recently? They were, they were located for the boundary for the survey in fourteen two thousand fourteen. Wow. That They're just located, yeah. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, you were saying something. I was just uh, saying that we should make a condition that the. To remove the interior boundary mark, the interior monumentation, yep. and then to set the new boundaries, the new boundaries right. and to request a mylar and a driveway it? permit. Or drive them into the ground. And then we need a state driveway permit. Okay. Yeah, state. DOT. State and tenant and idea of when that easement is going to go away. <laughs> if they know. Well, yeah. To be abandoned. Oh, just so it. the person that it buys that lot or whatever has an idea. Right. I can answer that question. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to know if I was to buy it. Yeah. I thought the power line didn't go through there. How that would put access to the in my head. The previous subdivision. That was going to be the access. Now, are you talking about the power easement? Yeah. Right. The one that's to be abandoned? That's a power easement. Sure. Right. <coughs> Electric. Design. Right. So I was so just cool. curious if they know when it's going to be abandoned, if they're actually really going to do it. So, so the, okay. It'd be great if they abandoned that power line right from my backyard, too. <laughs> 
transfer station well, would be kind of small. Yeah, and you wouldn't probably have any power anymore. <laughs> no, I'm all set. Yeah, you're all set. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, I see the generators sitting up there. Yeah. Good. So was that an actual condition of approval for removing the monuments? Was that voted on? Oh, yeah, we're just making a list so far. Okay. Do you want the list? Uh, you don't have the big enough pad. You don't have a big enough pad. Sure, I do. I so, New Hampshire DOT driveway permits. Yeah, yeah. that's that. Set the monuments for the, the new this, <coughs> this subdivision. Both of them. Proposal. Now, remove the interior monuments from the previous. We approved subdivision because you said they were set, correct? So they need to be removed, and then a mylar plan. Right. And Recording. Find out when they. And the abandonment. That just a condition that it has to be abandoned prior to final approval. The New Hampshire Co-op Electric easement. So what you want to see is a, a date on the plan. Yeah, a date, mm -hmm. and then when they want to abandon it. Because it, it says on there that to be abandoned. Correct. Okay. But that could be 30 years from now. Exactly. So if the note on the plan reflects the date of the abandonment. Right. Right. And then submit the mile on the revised plan following it. So the and the monument certification. And yeah. certification. There's only two of that. Because it's going to take us a week to get to it. So who's going to go out and verify that the interior monuments have been? We were going to see what you were doing last time. Maybe a minute. I was just asking him. He's got a little spare time. There's like, there's right? like three different plans, too. So it would yeah, be I a just project. I'm curious as to. A monument removal certification. None of those markers yeah, yeah, yeah. are the ones on the property line, right? No. 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 Those, those from the old remain. subdivision. They, no. You know, those, yours will always remain there. Well, hopefully. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean they, yours should always here. remain where they right. are. Right. I just don't want anybody out there pulling everything up that... No, 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 no. I don't want to do interior. It's over. <laughs> Can you eat? I, I'm missing one later. You should be able to get away from this. Yeah, I got it. Set the monuments and monuments certification. The, yes. You're going to have to... Where is this? You're going to have to resubmit the <laughs> revised by <laughs> large and paper plans. Yeah. Yeah. Remove the interior. And then put a note on the plan as to the date that the New Hampshire Electric Co-op easement was abandoned. That's safety. You'll get a note. I just want to have to work on it tomorrow. I will get that. Anything else? Those are just ones I know. That's all. And they're all over five. They need state subdivision. Well, you can add things to that. Okay. You know, you can All the existing AOT and stuff, mm -hmm. that's going to just expire. Well, they're not doing any construction. So right, I mean, I just made yeah. an existing one. I'm sure it will, yeah. They don't need to notify them. Or, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? AOT, the existing AOT. AOT. Yeah, that's all just going to go and drive and go away. Don't tell them or anything, or just ignore it. Okay. They didn't receive final approval either. No, it, was it, was it was conditional. Yeah. Okay. They hadn't met the conditions, so you don't have to revoke it or anything. All right. <coughs> oh, yeah. So, can we get a, a motion for conditional approval um, based on the uh, lengthy list? And if somebody needs to take the list and Hold in front of them, read it at a certain point. I'll make that motion. Can you raise my hand right now? Where is it? It's these bullets. Driveway permit, New Hampshire do, dot. 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 Monument. And monument. And, and monument certification. Uh, Mylar plan. Interior monuments for previous subdivision removed. Approval removed. New Hampshire Electric Co op is, uh, easement abandoned date on plan. That's it. Did, did you say approval removed? No, he just missed. He okay. 
No, just the interior from the previous yeah. subdivision approvals. Right. That's we it. also need a driveway permit on Durgan Road, just so that mm -hmm. it gets on the record. How much frontage is there? On Durgan Road? Yeah. He's going to make me add it's L36 and L37. So, uh, let's see. Let's see. and 53. Okay. 48. So it's more than 150. Yes. Okay. Tommy, um, can you add driveway permit for Durgan Road? I have conditional driveway permit for Durgan Road. Well, you usually don't get them until there's a house built, but on a town road, because there is enough front so. mm -hmm. All right. Should I made that motion. Anybody second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. tonight would be full, so I didn't put it on the agenda. Tonight. All right, so maybe next time. Yeah. Okay. All right, under planning board member membership, uh, as you guys know, John. Uh, the chair? No. No, I don't believe in that, so I can't support. Okay. A as you guys know, I think everybody saw the copy of that. Maybe I, didn't. I think it was only, no, only it was sent only to Okay. You and I am. Um, so John, you need to inform everybody. John uh, has, has you know, resigned from the position of chairman, um, and um, he will is willing to uh, operate as an alternate. Um, so we pass the selectmen to make that happen. I will be filling in temporarily. Um, we do have uh, Fenton Barney is willing to come back on the planning board. And, some of you guys were on the board with Fenton before. He's been on the board for several times, probably on and off over the past 25, 30 years. Um, so he's, he's tremendously experienced, and uh, we're hoping that the selectmen speed that right along as quickly as they can. Um, and John as well, of course. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have anything to add to that? There's scheduled the the request for John's request to move from full member to alternate and Fenton's request to be placed on the plan, um, appointed to the planning board will be heard on Our next October meeting, 15th. The 15th. Yep. Just to make it clear, won't be done before then. Uh, Tom, I'm sorry, the uh, 2019 budget for planning board. I went over this with the man a little bit this afternoon. Um, do you have a copy of it? I do. Can I just jump in real quick? Oh, and, take oh. over this for a okay. So this sheet, the current year expenditure, I just want everybody to know the reason why I gave that to you is because it it provides what was budgeted for 2018 and what's been expended. Um, and so then I prepared a memo, which will go before the Board of Selectmen and Budget Committee. If you go through the memo, um, the administrative assistant increases by $179 based on the COLA, 2.7% COLA approved by the Board of Selectmen. So there's an increase in that line item. 
the tuition reimbursement, I had it. We have 500, and I had recommended. I spoke with Matt about this. I recommended an increase by 200 because this year four people have attended the New Hampshire Municipal Association and were over expended by $60. So even if, and that doesn't even include the um, annual planning and zoning workshop if someone wants to go, we're already over expended. So I had recommended that it be increased to 200 to allow for additional workshops. Does that include this other time? Yes, it does. Okay. So That's how we over expected. Okay, so you're going to do, all three of us want to do the first two on that Saturday. Correct. Okay, so you were, yes. we're set for that. You're already you're registered. You, you're Lorraine, registered. and Kate are all registered okay. for um, lectures one and two. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'd send me an email for the old, actually, the rain is going to be driving, so send it to our so person. I'm excited. <laughs> I'll bring coffee and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I can call. Um, the next one is advertising. Uh, it is currently at 500. I am proposing an increase to 900 based on the 2018 usage. We're having, it's a slow creep, but it's an increase. A cre increase in the number of applications, which requires additional notices um, in newspapers. Those advertisement, the public notices have increased in cost. So I'm proposing an increase by 400 to cover um, those expenses. And, and, and again, based upon our current travel, we will probably be over on advertising for this year. Right, Quite, or, it depends. Or Quite possibly. We have two, I had to advertise for the October 18th hearings. We have another one in November. Right. So depending on December schedule, we may be over. Yeah. yeah. Um, or actually, we will be over. Right. We will be over right. for right. sure. So we only have 55, right. $45. Right. right, I was looking at the 900 figure. I'm like, I don't think we'll be over. But yeah. that's what I'm proposing. Um, Lakes Region Planning Commission, I called to get updated dues, they voted, and our dues increased by $201, so that's something that we didn't have control over. Supplies and postage are both level funded at $500. Uh, books and periodicals, level funded. Those are the, these books, the, great, the land use books, that's typically what I purchase out of that line item. Recording fees, I'm just... Again, level funded, only $150. Um, we've made a real effort to have recording fees fronted by the applicants or their agents, and we've been able to decrease this by thousands of dollars over the last five years, down to 150 Master plan review, this never seems to end. <laughs> Just It's level funded at $1,500. There was no contingencies for printing of the master plan, um, any last minute editing, any, any reviews by, the only review that the LRPC is working on is the land use chapter, and they are gonna review the rec, parks and rec chapter, but, or the recreation chapter, but I mean, we still have facilities, and it could require additional reviews, so between printing and advertising for public hearings um, of the master plan and um, what did I just say? Oh, the additional reviews for other chapters. So we're just requesting level funding for that. You talked to her earlier. Like I've placed in um, two phone calls and an email and no response. So I'm waiting, but our contract has expired and I need to renew it. We need to renew it prior to the end of the year so we can encumber the funds that we haven't spent in that line item, which is if you go on the back page, we have a balance of $2,000, and I don't want to lose that money, so. Um, and then subdivision engineering fees, fees, it's just, it's level funded. So that's the proposal, so. Uh, in going through the budget with the I did uh, take a look. We only have about $2,000 legal and I thought that since this is a relatively young board so to speak and that you know as we're seeing more applications and more attorneys charged 
we should probably increase that amount. My understanding is that comes in a whole other section. It's, it's in a different area of the budget, but right? $2,000 is about four hours with an attorney and mm -hmm. doesn't get you that far. It would probably end up changing, so we don't know what the rate's going to be. Mm -hmm. More. Give you any idea when he's done? Yes, he said that. So I spoke with Roger Murray. He said that he would be officially retiring by the end of the year. However, given um, certain projects that he has interest in, he will continue. So if we needed him for something, if we haven't found a council by then, we could still continue to use him. It's not a hard date, but it's it's one that he put out there. I've re I've re um, received three referrals. And I was explaining to Matt that um, I would like to be able to have a little time, maybe a couple weeks, contact some of the local surrounding towns or just in general, I guess, um, not just surrounding towns, but on the outskirts um, of who they use, planning and zoning attorneys, um, so that maybe we could get one that specifically only deals with land use um, issues which could require us to go like to Portsmouth or Concord or Manchester, which shouldn't be a big deal. We just right. retain them. So I've got three names and I'm going to continue to search for more. It just ends up being expensive with travel time and all that. So. so, and then I'll present all that to the board and then the board can start their discussions. I will say I found with attorneys that when you hire an attorney who is specifically for, you know, you know whether it's just land mm -hmm. use or what, even though they're hourly charged may be higher, it seems that the bills are actually the same amount of us because they don't have to look anything up. Yeah, they, like, they do have a very narrow part of the law and they specialize in it. When you deal with somebody that has experience in, in a particular area, it doesn't take them a long to no. to deal with it. Right, exactly. I mean, a big piece of any of this is case law and if that's where you operate, you're more familiar with this stuff and you can get to it much faster. Yeah. Um, so w when you talk to a land use attorney, they, they don't, they can just, right. you know, they don't, right. just whip it out. So I, I, it would strike me that we ought to, ought not to have a problem identifying and making the change before the end of the year. Okay. Well, it's doable. Yep. However, do you recommend an increase in the legal? I, I absolutely do. And to what? What's it now? 2000 What is it now? I don't know. Two what, uh, I believe it's 2000 I don't have that budget because it, like Bill said, right, it's a no, separate. I'm 99% sure it's 2000 Yep. I would go to 5000 And you can eat that up in a hurry. What the rate we go, we might. Yeah. <laughs> what is if this doesn't work out? <laughs> yeah, go with 5,000. I'm just putting out some hated usage. I think we're going to be utilizing them more. Yeah. I's have to be dotted, T's have to be crossed. That's correct. We want to make sure we don't leave ourselves hanging out there. Okay. So, if, if nobody has any objections, I request a motion I'll make a to submit to it as presented. <coughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. To oh, adjourn. Uh, to Tony, that. stay with us. Okay. <laughs> 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 You're getting ahead of yourself. Here. Lunch <laughs> <all the time>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to approve it for the budget? I second it. All those in okay. favor? Hi. Uh, last item was, uh, was it Carlton. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we have not yet received back from Murray, correct? Correct. We don't have an opinion. I spoke with um, Mike Carlton this evening, and I informed him that we should have it by the 18th, the meeting for the 18th. So I believe he'll be in attendance at that meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know of any other business or informational items. Uh, is there any public comment before we adjourn? You want me to do a public? Sure. I think you're doing a good job. Yes. Sitting Hopefully tonight. you'll never see me do it again. No, but I, you know, I, don't, I think you've done a good job and I thought you talked to the public and I think you did a good job. 
Thanks, I'll second that opinion. <coughs> so, and and that wasn't to push you to be chairman. I was just. Believe me, you, you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> One other item we talked about last time zoning changes for next year. We need to get to it sooner rather than later so we don't end up in January. It's just so, that one change, right? right. So, yeah, okay. let's, if, if we can get to it, maybe well, next meeting. we get something in writing but from someone else for our well, zoning, so you don't yeah. know, but yeah. But you have an idea of what you want to do, so yeah. let's get a straw man on the table and start working on it. So mm -hmm. we have plenty of time to get it in a form that when we go to public hearing, we can, if, they have, if, if we need to do some more work on it, we've got time to get it done and get it on the warrant. It probably wouldn't hurt that if we were just send a memo out to the other boards that if they have any zoning changes mm -hmm. that they'd like for us to consider. Yeah. Good idea. ZBA may have something, conservation may have something, agricultural may have something. Who knows? Okay, Tony. <laughs> I